You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. My name is Ari Whitner, and this is your NXT Audio Update for Wednesday, June 22, 2016. You missed a blah episode of NXT this week. Um, it was a whole bunch of squash matches and a whole bunch of promises that better stuff's happening in the future, which undoubtedly it is, uh, because the big news coming out of this week, July 13th, three weeks from today, right before the debut of the WWE Cruiserweight Classic, Finn Balor will go one-on-one with Shinsuke Nakamura. That should be a hell of a match. But before we get to July 13th, let's talk about June 22nd, shall we? I want to talk about the rules of pro wrestling. And we as fans, we've pro- we probably all know all of the rules, all of the givens when you're watching televised pro wrestling. Rules such as if uh, you come down the aisle and your opponent is already in the ring and doesn't get a formal introduction, you're probably going to win. If you have a snazzy ring entrance and your opponent is only wearing short, plain-looking tights, you're going to win. If the fans uh, know who you are, love you, chant your gimmick, and the fans have no bloody clue who your opponent is, especially because they gave him some stupid name, you're going to win. Those are the rules of pro wrestling. With that said, Ty Dillinger wrestled Oni Lorkin in our opener. Oni Lorkin is the former Chris Gerard. Chris Gerard was just too easy of a name, I guess. So they had to give him the name of Oni Lorkin. That's a real thing. Dillinger won a match three weeks ago, but since lost two straight to Andrade Cien Almas, and theoretically this match was here to set him up on a new winning streak of one. Um, uh, let's see here. Like I said, he has a real good chance of winning since he was he got the big entrance to start the match, and Lorkin was already standing in the ring when uh, the show began. Lorkin, this should have uh, tipped me off here, but Lorkin got more offense than you would think, including nearly taking Dillinger's head off with an uppercut. Um, Lorkin hit a series of elbows in the corner until he got smacked right in the jaw with a super kick, which popped the crowd. Dillinger went for the ten punches of doom, but Lorkin pushed him away and then pinned Dillinger with a neckbreaker? So much for the rules of wrestling, I guess. Austin Aries was backstage with Kathy, cutting a promo, uh, saying he'll prove his greatness one day, become NXT champion, saying you don't become the greatest of all time in one match, and you don't uh, stop being the greatest because you lost one match. He's now focused, and he has a bigger chip on his shoulder than before. When up walked the gigantic No Way Jose, who told him to stay positive. Bailey was randomly standing outside in her wrestling gear and announced that she had just found out that she'd been cleared to return to action, which is good because, you know, I can only imagine what she would have done if she flew all the way to Orlando, got dressed in her wrestling gear, and then was told, well, too bad. You know, she might be sad. No Way Jose versus Josh Woods was next. Woods looks like we'd imagine an indie MMA fighter to look like. And, of course, we've proved over the years that the real tough men are in WWE. I mean, look, John Cena must be tougher than all those MMA guys because, you know, unlike those wimpy fighters, John Cena has never submitted. You know, that proves how tough he is, right? Um, This match was 95% Jose, and he won with a full Nelson Slam. Jose danced after the match when he was interrupted by Austin Aries. I guess, you know, that's only apropos since Jose interrupted his promo time. 
Aries told him that in this industry you are not defined by your victories, but by your losses. He says he was not 100% to take over, but will not make excuses. Aries then realized what Jose taught him. Aries forgot that NXT is about having fun, and thanks Jose for reminding him of that and reminding him what he needs to be. Aries shook Jose's hand and went to leave, but Jose dragged him back into the ring to dance. And this actually happened and got to the point where it's now 25 minutes into the show and Ty Dillinger lost to somebody with a wacky name and Austin Aries is dancing with No Way Jose. However, at minute 26, Austin Aries turned on No Way Jose. They danced all the way up the ramp to the announced position before Aries finally turned on Jose, shoving him over the table, uh, beat his butt all the way back to the ring, and then eventually slapped the last chancery on on the ramp. Backstage, William Regal met with Shinsuke Nakamura and officially announced the match in three weeks with Finn Balor when Buddy Murphy, of all people, walked in and was mad that Mr. Regal wasn't treating him like a star. Nakamura basically informed him that they would be wrestling. The return of Bailey was next versus Deanna Perrazzo. Bailey's first TV match in five weeks since a worked injury angle in a match against Nia Jax. Of course, you know, despite being injured on NXT, she pretty much wrestled on every single house show since. So, I mean, you know, the quality control of Mr. Regal's, you know, it's really pushing something there. Um, anyway, this match was all Bailey, which is exactly what the fans wanted. The fans just exploded for this match, and uh, Bailey picks up the win with the Bailey to Belly. Carmella wants to be the face of the women's division, and she wants to be the next champion. Alexa Bliss walked up to her backstage and said that no one knows who Carmella is. They argued over who was more important to their team, with Alexa pointing out that she left her guys while uh, Enzo and Cass uh, left her high and dry in NXT. It was then video package mania, as we got a video package for Samoa Joe, then a video package for the Oscar Nia Jax match for TakeOver, then Nia Jax came out for a match, and with Nia Jax theoretically standing in the ring and having to wait through all this, they then had another video package, this one for the Authors of Pain. Nia Jax was so mad about waiting, she then destroyed Liv Morgan in about a minute. Uh, Morgan went for a headlock in the first 10 seconds, and so Nia squashed her like a bug. Um, Morgan's best offense was running away from Nia in this match, but Nia ran at her, smashing Liv with her entire body, and winning with a power bomb. And then the main event, the ultimate match of the night, the one that you paid your hard-earned money to see, theoretically. The match that didn't start until 8.55. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Buddy Murphy. So Blake and Murphy seem to have finally thrown in the towel on their team. However, I do remember saying that when Jason Jordan and Ty Dillinger were breaking up seemingly every week for months last year. Um, the first thing that happened when the bell rang was Nakamura kicked poor Murphy in the leg. Then he kicked poor Murphy in the head. Murphy did get to use both an arm bar and a headlock before Nakamura continued to use him as a kicking bag. And eventually Nakamura got tired of kicking Murphy and won with the Kinshasa. And that was it. You know, like I said, nothing that you have to go out and watch on NXT this week. They're literally, like, seriously, there's nothing to this show that if you miss this show, you're going to be sitting there going, oh, man, I missed, you know, I missed this great character development. No. I missed this great match. No. You missed nothing. But with that said, you know what? Thank you all for listening, and I will talk to you again in seven days. And remember, you can follow Arya on Twitter at the Really Real AW.
You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network.